Hello, trading has closed on November the 18th, 2023. As always, we'll start with our disclaimer. We'll go over our calls, we'll make some predictions. It's the weekend, we'll take a look at the longer term picture, which I think is clearer than the shorter term picture. Just remember, I can be completely wrong in any trade you make to be made at your own risk. Also remember the indicators I use for longer term calls aren't the same as the indicators I use with the MEJT system. They don't have the same level of accuracy as the system. For Friday, we looked for the pattern with the early low, which is this, and Monday should also have the early low. This is a reminder of what we said. These are the patterns I like to see next week. Now, the week in which Thanksgiving falls used to be one of the most bullish weeks of the year, but the last few years, it hasn't always held true. Well, during the day, MJT said all these squeals were false moves that were going to retrace, and that's already played out. We had this big rally on a Friday, and MJT said it wouldn't stick, and it didn't. It retraced, and that's played out. This retrace on a Friday when you're rallying all day is of concern to me. It's hard to turn things around on a Friday because nobody wants to go against the trend when the big weekend's coming. It's usually the action of professional traders when you get a retrace like this on a Friday. It's also of concern to me that once again we rally all day and can't close over the highs. Back in the 60s, there was an analyst named Stan Weinstein who had an indicator where he compared the action of the first hour of trading to the last hour of trading. He thought it would give a clue as to what the market was going to do in the future. Usually the first hour is strong and last hour is weak. Like here we gapped up, here we dropped down. He interpreted this to mean the public was entering orders to buy. And then when the public went home, and the pros were around, they just didn't have the same enthusiasm to keep prices up. So by his system, this is a negative indicator. Of course, if we get up here, all that negativity, you just, you just forget about it and that we're not going to know until Monday. We've gone over this red trend line, but we're stalling at the gray trend line. Now, according to to Mark's work, we're going to trade 230 points or so over this red trend line, and that red trend line should hold. But this trend line is declining, and if we do have a pullback here, it could but have to drop for quite a bit and still stay over the line, and it wouldn't really change anything about the prediction. This tells us what's going to happen. It doesn't really tell us when. What you really want to do if you're a bull is to gap over this resistance and that hasn't happened yet. And this resistance, I think, is pretty strong. So if you do gap over it, you could rally a lot higher. Well, this is the count I've been using and it identified the low to the point. So I'd like for this to be the right count. The thing is, if wave four is over, and this is wave five, I like to count it as a five wave structure. And that's not ruled out. I mean, this could be one, two, and this could be start of wave three in a big rally, but this is hard to count as a five. In fact, this whole thing is hard to count as a five. It counts much, much more easily as a three. And if it is a three, we've seen the price low of wave four, but not the wave low of that, of that wave. And we're still in wave four if that's a three wave structure. Here's the argument for the three wave structure. And it's possible to count this as an ending diagonal triangle. That's your ABCDE. It's possible to have ending diagonal triangles in a wave C, even though that's not where they're usually found. And if that's the right count, we should retrace at least to the origin, which is around 4,400, but more likely it will retrace the Fibonacci percentage of the whole rally, which gives us possible targets of 4,361, 4,312, and 4,263. 
Let's concentrate on this 43.12, as we'll see. This is all dependent upon this holding, of course. We have up here, just forget the whole thing. Well, this is the alternative count. It has this as A, A, B, C for C, for, for B, and by this count, way B is over, because C is equal to 2.618 times A, and if you look at the internal structure of B, you have this A, B, C, and inside B you have an A, B, C with C equal to A. So even though it's not the only count, it's a perfectly valid count, which has this ending here, in spite of all the bullishness I feel, it wouldn't change anything if we get a wave black C. Now wave, let's assume this counts right. Where would black C end, which is where wave magenta 4 would end? Well, we had 4312 and magenta 4 is equal to magenta 2 at 4316.05, which is pretty much the same number. So there's wave balance at that price. Wave black C would be equal to wave black A at 43.23, but of course that's the wave law. You could have a print law under that and again be at the same price. My long-term target is 5087, as we've shown before. And if that's right, and if wave 5 starts from this price, there'd be a good Fibonacci relationship at the same price between wave one and wave three. So the waves balance out around around, around the 43.16 area. Doesn't mean they won't balance elsewhere. But if this is the end of the wave, I mean, we could drop at least to 4,400 for the Indian Diagonal Triangle, and then to 4,300. And don't forget, for us to get to 4,300 and stay over this trend line, that could take a month or two, which isn't what I was looking for at all. So hopefully that won't play out, but doesn't break any rules. Well, Monday's pattern has a really low, regardless of where we open. For just a couple of weeks past the great bottom, we've seen this wide breadth thrust. All systems should be go for much higher prices to come. None of this precludes going lower for us. First, I'm just concerned that I can't count this rally as a five, but I can count it as a three. We're stalling at resistance and the late drop on a Friday is concerning to me. Bulls need to continue the rally, ideally by gapping over resistance. And um, whenever you try to pick tops and bottoms, you can get your head handed to you, so don't. If, if we get to fight this whole, everything I said falls apart and we gap over this, I don't care because I don't have any money writing on it yet. So if we begin a steep drop instead, it would lead to a sizable pullback, could lead to a sizable pullback, both in terms of time and price. We're in the most bullish time period of the year, so it is, it is, it is fighting history for us to retrace here. But I can explain a decent correction beginning if Friday's high holds, even though I think we're going much higher after that. Bulls are in a must-perform mode. They're stalling by the resistance at a price that is compatible with a sizable pullback without changing the longer-term bullish picture. So I'd be a lot happier if all this analysis fell apart and we gapped up. But uh, that hasn't happened yet, and if we drop from here, I, I can explain a pretty sizable drop without changing the long-term bullish picture. I'm not going to be around Monday afternoon to watch things, but I'm hoping the picture is going to be clear before that. And that's today's call.